Hello. <laughs> Hi, you guys. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Piano Keys. I don't know if anybody's here yet. If you're here, then um, say hello in the in the comments box, and I'll give you all a few minutes to. That oh, looks like there's a couple of people here. Hi, whoever you are. Let me know you're here and uh, where you are in the world and what time it is where you are. Oh, bonjour, Adam. Adam Sinclair does not sound like a French name, but maybe so. <laughs> All right. Um, can you see my piano in the back there? That was the piano that somebody gave me. I got it for free. So uh, I only had to pay a few hundred dollars to have it moved to my apartment and then to, um, to have it worked on a little bit. Ah, uh, England. Royal Leamington Spa. Ooh, that sounds very relaxing. <laughs> Boa tarde. Oh, um, what language is that? Is that... Wellington, what language is that? It's 408 in New York State. Are you... Cody, you're in New York? New York? Yeah, you're one hour ahead of me. Hi, Domi. Mwah, 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 mwah. I wish I could see you. Um, and... 9.08 p.m. there. Oh, wow. Awesome. So good. It's not too late for anybody, I hope. It's um, just past 3 o'clock in Dallas, Texas, and it's still hot, you guys. It's been hot nonstop for more than four months. When I say nonstop, I mean like nonstop, day, night. It doesn't matter. It's very, very hot here. Oh, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> so um, Hungary. Oh, hi. I work with a Hungarian lady. Um, I work at an entertainment event company. Um, named Vicky, and yeah, hungry, mm, Hungarian food is good. Um, Bartok land, yeah, <laughs> I love Bartok. Hi, from Poland, one of my friends is from Poland, Anna. Um, her name her name is actually Alexandra. I met her at the dog park. I live near a dog park because I don't know if you know, but I have two chihuahuas that uh, are my world. In fact, Elvis is sleeping right here. He keeps his eye on me no matter where I am. And so I've made a lot of friends at the dog park, and one of them is named Alexandra. She's from Poland. Um, Angola, wow. Hi, wunderbar. <laughs> Ang California, it's where I'm from. Well, it's where I spent most of my life. Rhapsody, Espanol, where, where in California are you? I'm from LA area, actually. That's where I did all my schooling. Um, Beautiful there, nice weather. Getting very, very crowded though, right? <laughs> Hi, you guys. Oh, this is so much fun. So I was saying the piano in back of me is from, uh, what did I say? It was 1912 and um, it's actually Central Coast. Oh, okay. <laughs> Central Coast from California Rhapsody. <clears throat> very nice. Uh, my dad used to live in Ojai pretty close to the Central Coast. Um, I don't know if you guys know, probably not. My dad passed away uh, just a few months ago in May. Um, and I haven't told very many people about it. It's, it's been very um, it's been very hard for me to deal with that. But uh, of course I'm dealing with it through music. I am writing music in honor of him. Thank you very much, Cody. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you more about my dad. Actually, I am I just finished a piece that I wrote to like, kind of like express my feelings at the loss. It, it's, it's very complicated, but I, I'll, I, I'm going to release that. I'll make a video of that piece I wrote, and I'll tell you all about my dad, and you guys can tell me about your dads. I know that uh, relationships with parents aren't always easy because they're, the e they're the closest people to us, and so, you know, that's where we – have our most intimate and strong feelings. So um, thank you so much. Thank you, Theodore. All right, so the piano, <laughs> it's a really nice piano. As you can see, it's really beautiful. The problem is because it's so old, um, the piano technician couldn't actually tune it because he said that the strings would break if we stretch them. So it's out of tune and it's like really flat. It's almost a half step flat. And the keys make a lot of noise when I play, which is fine in person, but I tried to record a tutorial on it and the, you know, the microphone magnifies all the sounds. So it just sounded like there was a drummer playing along with me. So I won't be using it for tutorials or anything like that, but maybe I'll just make a video just to show you what it sounds like and, um, you know, just, just to, to share that with you. 
Theodore, your, your father was your hero. Yeah, that's good. That's the way it should be. That's wonderful. So do you have any questions? I have a lot to talk to, to, I have a lot to talk about with regard to music. Um, but I want to know if you have any questions or you want to say anything. Um, just you know, write it down. I'm pointing you can't see what I'm pointing at, but an English piano tuner would be able to tune it. Uh, actually, he was English. He's from he's from England, from some part of London, I think. Um, <laughs> he 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 uh, moved to Texas a few years ago from England, and he was saying how amazing it is here because he's able to have his own business, and he's already found lots of work. <laughs> So, um, can you not be can you not be annoying, please? Most serious, most serious. You need to stop that. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Okay, most serious. I'm gonna block you if you don't stop. Okay. This is not about how I look, but thank you, Anna. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, any questions about music? Let me know. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about something that people have asked me my entire life. And um, on, they're asking me online too, but mostly it's been asked in person. Oh, Matt, hi, I have a question. I have trouble keeping up the tempo in Rondo a la, Tur a la Turca. Can I improve that somehow? Okay, so the way that you improve um, playing faster or you know going fast is you have to practice very slow. Um, if you watch any of my like practice time videos, I show you exactly what I do. Um, Prakar, I do have perfect pitch. It's very helpful. Thank you for asking. Um, yeah, Cody, you're right. Go slow. You gradually increase the tempo. This is the most reliable. It's boring. Uh, it's a boring like technique. It's a boring like insider tip, but it's true. You play very slow and you practice in very small sections. You practice hands separately, like basically exactly how I show you in any of my practice time videos. So you go very slowly, hands separately. You start with the metronome at a very slow um, pace to make sure that you're learning the motions that you want to keep. And then you increase the tempo little by little, like maybe two clicks, three clicks per minute at a time, like that little. So almost like your body doesn't even know that it's going faster. You know it's going faster because you're seeing the number, but your body doesn't realize it. Next thing you know, you're playing much, much faster and you did it gradually, which means that you kept the relaxation that you had in your muscles. You kept the really good um, motions that you were practicing. What happens if you try to go slow and then very fast is uh, one part of you panics and you go, I'm going to go fast. And so things tense up. You make mistakes. It's like the worst thing to do. You might as well not. So, um, yeah. Slow practice, hands separately if you need it. And then with the metronome, increasing two or three clicks per minute at a time. That's it. All right, let's see. Um, GG, usually questions come up while you tackle topics. What? Um, I'll, I'll try to understand what that means. Um, Matt, you're welcome. Adam, are you a fan of Tim Minchin? Yeah. Tim Minchin's awesome. Plays beautiful melody and song lullaby. Um, if like to see if you attempt it as it speeds up. Um, you know what? I will definitely make notes to to take a look at that and see what I can do with it. Uh, how does she? How to read sheet music faster? Start with reading very simple sheet music, like way simpler than what you can actually play technically, and. Uh, you know, go from there. Maybe get one of the easy method books like Piano Adventures or Alfred's or something very, very easy for you. And you just practice. I also make all my students say the note names out loud. If you've done my piano boot camp courses or instant piano, you know this already. I hope you're doing it. You say the note names out loud as you play them. That really makes a huge difference. So start easy and then go more and more advanced as you want to read. Um, let's see. How best to retain repertoire? I couldn't play piano for six weeks and it's taken almost as long to refresh all the things I had learned. I think I forget stuff more now I'm older. So the real Winslet fan, this is this is a battle we all face. Um, 
So if you are practicing in a way that is getting you to learn pieces really well, um, I have a technique that I talk about in, in one of my videos. It's basically the three coin technique. If you use that, um, you're learning in a way that's like kind of putting it into your long term memory. So even if you don't practice for a while, yes, it'll take you time to come back and rework things, but you'll pick it up much, much easier than if you didn't didn't have it in your long term memory. Does that make sense? Let me know if that makes sense. We all we all battle this. Like, you know, I'm a professional musician. And if I don't practice a piece for a while, I come back to it. I can pick it up, but I'm not as good as I was when I, you know, stopped playing it. It's it's just the way we are. Um, imagine if you remembered everything you had ever learned. Like, that would be impossible to keep track of. Um, hi, Danielle, Eduardo. Okay, it's going really fast now. I'm having trouble with 2-2 timing. Are there books or other materials? So, Theodore, 2-2. Two, two. Basically, 4-4 four, four, uh, timing is four counts in each measure and a quarter note gets one count. 2-2 two, two is like half of that. So, a half note gets one count and there's two counts per measure. So, it's almost like 4-4. Four, four. What, what I tend to do for people who are having trouble with that is just count it as if it's in 4-4. Four, four. And then, so if you're counting quarter notes like one, two, three, four, when you start thinking in 2-2, two, two, you would count those quarter notes like one and two and. Usually 2-2 two, two time is for faster pieces like marches, you know, to, to have you moving along. So you can practice counting it in 4-4 four, four, and then just have all the note values. So your quarter notes in your mind should become like eighth notes and your half notes should become like quarter notes. I hope that makes sense. Um, all righty. River flows in you really hard to play for a beginner. Um, so the thing is that when you say beginner, I'm not really sure what that means. I know we have to have like beginner, intermediate, advanced, that sort of thing, but I don't know what your background is with your technique, you know, what other pieces or exercises you've learned. This brings up actually a really good point. I know that we're all very short on time these days and we wanna we wanna do when we come to play piano and we're doing it for fun, not like for a job, we want to play the pieces that we love. I totally get that. But that's not the best way to approach uh, learning piano, especially the pieces that you love, which tend to be a little bit more on the advanced side. The best way is to practice exercises and practice pieces that are a little bit easier than the one that you're aiming for, because it's all it all goes together. You can't just isolate a piece and say, I'm gonna to learn to play that. When you haven't taught your fingers, your hands to obey the messages that your brain is sending, it's very, very difficult to just jump in. It's like if I said, okay, well, um, I can do, I don't know, I can do like a little roll on the ground. So I want to learn uh, a gymnastics technique but I haven't done sit-ups, I haven't done pull-ups, like I don't even know how to balance myself. You know, it's it, it, it looks cool, but there's a lot of background that went into that creation of that process. Does that make sense? Let me know. All right, um, so is it hard to play for a beginner? Maybe, depending on what else you've done. If you're just brand new to piano, I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend something easier and most definitely doing exercises. I've got a bunch of free ones uh, on my YouTube channel that you can do. Um, you were the, so Ethan, Ethan Parodies. Hey, you were the one that helped me learn Rondo a la Turca. I'm glad I finally found your channel. Now I can learn more songs. Thanks. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, Matt, do you have any recommendations about which pieces should I play? I'm about grade six piano, but I don't go to piano school. So the the different grades in different like countries <laughs> in different methods really don't translate. So I'm not really sure what grade six means. Um, so I can't really recommend. What I would say is um, if, if you're studying on your own and you're at grade six, find pieces that look about the same level as what you're playing okay um eric santos hey how are you i'm good thank you <laughs> thank you for the content you're welcome you do really amazing work well thank you 
My question is, how can I teach my fingers to play the right notes? I have trouble playing faster songs. Yeah, it's basically what I've been talking about. You can't isolate one thing. So you, you really do have to start, you know, with the basics, with um, scales. Now, there's different ways to practice scales. Most people don't practice it correctly. And I think that's going to be my next project. Um, scales, exercises, easier pieces, play slowly, play hands separately. Um, it's good to be ambitious, but you have to know that you have to build up to certain levels, okay? Um, let's see, I'll look for that video. All right, awesome, Real Winslet fan. There are lo loads of simplified versions of The River Flows in You that most beginners can play. It's a, yeah, so you can find simplified versions. Um, I don't have one, I haven't made one, but I'm sure there's lots of stuff online. All right. Hi, Felipe. Um, how to play arpeggios faster? Same thing. You have to go slow. I, I, I'm going to, as I said, that's the next thing I'm going to tackle is scales and arpeggios because I know that a lot of people play them, but I also know that, mm, that you're not practicing the, them the best way to benefit your technique. OK, so look out for that. That's going to that's I actually started that last night um, because a friend and I were talking and he was saying, I just can't get better. I'm doing scales. What's the matter? So. All right. It's coming up. Um, well, Elvis is coughing. So. Um, let's see. I enjoy playing Sinatra's music, which a lot of his is written in 2-2 plus other pieces. Thank you very much for your help. Okay, so Teddy, um, so Sinatra mostly sang what were called standards, American standards, which are basically songs that are written in the early to mid part of the 20th century. Many of them actually came from musical theater. Um, and they were taken by jazz musicians and turned into standards. And, you know, that's basically what Sinatra is saying. And he did a wonderful job with it. Um, I would say, since you have available recordings of him singing, use your ear more. Don't try to count as much as listening to the song and trying to feel it and play it that way. OK, so a lot of those jazz standards, actually, uh, jazz shouldn't be played the same way every time. Jazz isn't even written out, if, if you think about it. It's a it's an oral tradition, meaning it was passed down by people listening and um, copying each other. So with, with his standards, with Sinatra's songs, you can use your ear to help you with all those rhythms, OK? Uh, let's see, what else? I'm really boring with this questions at this point, but I need peddling advice. Okay, Matt, if you're bored, then you can leave. Bye. See you later. Um, so, all right. Arup, I hope I'm saying your name right. Please show us some proper technique of playing arpeggios faster. Yeah, it's coming up. So uh, a lot of this stuff isn't something I can just show you once and go, okay, you know, go do it. I know. I know a lot of people on YouTube do that. Like you'll see like a uh, tutorial on how to play, I don't know, a song. And I'll click on it and it's like a 10 minutes for a 20 minute piece. I, uh, come on. That's actually one of the reasons I decided to make my YouTube channel. I was getting so frustrated by these, these tutorials that weren't really even teaching much. Maybe they were teaching like the introduction to a song and they weren't saying that that's what they're teaching. So that's why I made my channel and that's why I show the entire piece and I show you exactly what to do. So um, let's see. Is Bohemian Rhapsody by Jared Ratnick a tough piano piece? Have you? I don't know. I don't know who that is. Um, I have a simplified vis, uh, version of Bohemian Rhapsody that you can find on my channel. I started to do practice times with it, but I noticed that a lot of people weren't watching them. So, you know, I want to spend my time doing stuff that more people want to see. Um, okay. Paco, uh, hi, could you advise us which classic songs we should practice in beginner level? So if you're, and again, beginner level doesn't say a whole lot. I don't know how many years and how, you know, how much you've been practicing, but um, I would definitely stay away from Chopin. <laughs> um, you can start with like the easier Bach pieces um, my easy versions of pieces are good because I think about how you're moving around the piano and I try to keep it very simple. Mm, 
You can start with very easy Mozart pieces, like the stuff he wrote when he was a child. Uh, a lot of the method books, method piano books, have easy pieces. You can start with those. All righty. Um, Matt, I didn't mean bored. I meant I was boring to you because I ask a lot of questions. Oh, I see. Okay, sorry, I misunderstood. Um, no, questions are good. Um, I will answer the best that I can. Hi, Cecilia, or is it Cecilia? I don't know which one it is. Hi, from Portugal. Hey, cool. All right, Teddy, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Gigi, even speeding up, you change also technique. I practice Moonlight Sonata third movement and slowly it's fine. I speed up, it's fine. When I speed up even more, I don't miss the notes. I think you mean you don't get the notes. It just, it might be a little too advanced for you or you might be speeding up too soon. It's either one or the other. Or you might be, you might be also tensing up in which case, you know, imagine if you tensed up your legs and you tried to go running. How would that feel? Really weird, right? So you have to relax your joints in order to run. It's the same thing when you're playing piano, especially when you're playing fast. When you want to play fast, you have to be really relaxed. So you might be speeding up too soon, which is causing you to tense up. All right. Some notes come out mute. Cherney versus Hannon. I'm not a fan of Hannon. I like Cherney. I really like Cherney. Uh, Hannon, I don't like so much because... Um, it's not a real world application. Like how many pieces have you playing the same exact pattern up and down the piano? N none, <laughs> only like exercises do, right? And I think that exercises should be applicable to things that you're actually gonna be playing. Also, if you're doing Hannon, which is basically repeating the same pattern over and over, and for some reason you don't have good technique, let's say like you're holding your hands wrong and you've got tension. So now you've practiced an entire you know, piece, an entire exercise with bad technique. Guess what? It's not gonna make you better. It's actually gonna make you worse. So Hannon, no, not for me. Um, where can I buy that picture behind you? That one, I bought it on Amazon, isn't it cool? <laughs> yeah, um, the piece I'm learning at the moment has a mordant and some inverse mordants in it. I don't know how to play them. Can you give a quick explanation? So a mordant is basically, it's similar to a trill, but it's shorter, much shorter. Um, and it's just a decoration. Um, basically, a mordant is the note itself that's written and the note above and then back to the note or the note itself down note and back to the note. If you look up Google, like Google Mordant, and you'll see exactly, I'm sure, like you'll, you'll see a million hits of what it is. It's just a, it's a decoration. It's an ornament, very similar to a trill, but much shorter. Um, technique for fast piano run. Are you asking me a question? So I actually have some technique videos that I think are pretty good. You can work on those. And um, I'm creating something with scales that's gonna really help you with that. Is it possible to learn playing piano on my own at home using online resources like YouTube or should I go for a teacher? So all things being equal, if you find a good teacher, I'll tell you something right now. There are a lot of bad teachers. There are. Uh, I've known piano teachers who don't play piano. <laughs> Um, I know piano teachers who don't play very well and they're passing on their bad technique advice to the students. I know very good piano teachers who um, have great technique. They perform all the time, so they're keeping up their, you know, their skills and they know how to impart that knowledge to the person who is in front of them. Every student has their own needs. They have their own strengths. So. A, a teacher, a good teacher will know how to adapt their teaching to what that student is capable of and what they want to do. So if you can find an excellent teacher, much better to do that. Um, otherwise, you can do online courses. The danger with online courses is that they can give you information, but they can't give you feedback. So I can tell you, hey, keep your fingers around, relax your wrist and do it like this. That's all very good information, right? But I don't, I don't know what you're doing. 
I can't watch you and say, I know you think you're keeping your finger around, but look. In fact, just last Monday, I had a student and he was playing a scale and his pinky was curled up like, you know, like this. So, and I said, hey, did you know that your fifth finger is very tight? He said, no, I had no idea. I mean, it's his own, own hand. And that's the way it is because when you're learning, there's so much to think about. You know, yes, of course, you need an, a, an expert pair of eyes and somebody with a lot of, um, you know, a lot of experience that can help you. Think about it. Even like Olympic level athletes have coaches, right? They don't they don't say, well, you know what? I'm an Olympic level. Actually, there was one skater that did that. Was it Michelle Kwan or somebody fired her coach and then she did horribly in the next competition so it's always much better to have an expert pair of eyes on you so that's the thing with online courses they give information and it can be great information but they can't help you to to do it well okay um all righty should it be half step Real ones look fan. I don't know what you mean by half step. Should what be half step? Matt Stan, are you going to do a Moonlight Sonata second movement because I really want to learn it, but I don't know how to sight read good enough and I can't find any target. Okay. So I don't think that I'm, I'm going to do it. Um, I just, I don't have time. I'm really sorry. Um, what you should do, what, you, what will help you a lot is learn how to read music. It's really not that hard. Um, if anybody here has taken my courses to learn how to read music, I know Dominique has. It's really not that hard, you guys. And you're going to save yourself so much time in the long run. And you're going to be independent. You, you'll be able to learn whatever you want to learn, you know, on your own. It's not hard if you're taught well. Um, okay. So, Arup, you're wonderful and very helpful. Thank you. That's very sweet. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I always felt like I reached a... So, Michelle, um, I always feel like I reach a speed threshold with difficult pieces. Even with gradually increasing up tempo, I struggle with tensing up in performance. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if those pieces are a little too advanced for you at this point or if you're trying to go faster than you're able to. Are you doing technique exercises as well or are you just playing pieces? So... Think about any athlete. They don't just go out and play their game, right? They do training. They, they spend time in the gym or whatever. They cross train on the off season. You can't just go from piece to piece. It doesn't work. And, and you found that out. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if you're actually, you know, doing technique. Um, you might be picking pieces that are too advanced or you might be going too fast. If you have a teacher, I would bring that up with your teacher. Okay. Um, any ideas for performance muscle tension or becoming more comfortable with very difficult fast pieces? So it's basically what I just said. Um, Prakar, how do you record piano music and which software do you use to EQ your music? Um, I've recorded different ways. Right now I'm going from my digital keyboard um, into um, an interface and I'm right now I'm just recording on GarageBand and then I EQ it however I need to. I used to when I had that when I was I was uh, renting a baby grand piano so I thought I'd use a microphone. Man, it is really hard to microphone a piano if you're not in a studio. It's, it's very hard to do that. So then I was using a mic and I was also trying to EQ it in GarageBand. It was hard. Uh, not to mention that, you know, you pick up any random stray noises. But so now, for now, I found it easier to just plug in my digital keyboard into the interface. I use a Scarlett something. And then uh, I plug that into my Apple computer and I use GarageBand. Um, <laughs> Matt, okay, thank you for your advice. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, GG, it's not, it's not hard to read it. It's hard to read it fast in order to play along. Well, yeah, of course. You have to read it slowly first. You have to learn slowly first. Everyone does. Um, even at the professional levels, you can't just pick up any piece and play it at the tempo that it's supposed to be. So um, people say to me <laughs> all the time, you, you, why do you practice? You know, you've been doing this your whole life. First of all, because you have to set in muscle memory for that particular piece. I don't have the muscle. It's like asking an actor, well, why are you learning that role? You already know how to act. 
Well, yes, but I don't know the order of those words, you know? So everybody has to practice. If you want to just jump in and play fast, you're going to be very disappointed. It, it just doesn't work like that for human beings. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. I bought a cheap electric piano and, and it came with only with a sustain pedal. Do I need other two pedals to improve even more? So um, actually, I just made a pedaling course that talks about that. The sustain pedal is the one that we use the most. The middle pedal, which is the sostenuto, is almost never used. I'll, I'll put it this way. Um, most of the time, when it is a sostenuto pedal, sometimes it's not even used for that. It's used to silence a piano. Um, so when it is a sostenuto pedal, I never even touch it. If you look at most pianos that have three pedals, you'll see that the middle one is pretty shiny because <laughs> it hasn't been used. Um, all right, so no, you don't need it. And the one on the left is the una corda, which people think it's for playing quietly. Well, it makes the piano quieter, but it's really more of like an effect. It makes it sound more mysterious, or, you know, things like that. You shouldn't use the una corda, which is the soft pedal, just to play soft. That's being lazy and that's not using technique. It's not appropriate. Um, okay. Any special advice and suggestions for all of us? Yes. If you love to play the piano, do it. Don't care about what level you're on. Don't care about who's better than you. <laughs> Sometimes I see, uh, you know, those, everyone has seen those, um, you know, like genius uh, three-year-old plays, blah, 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 it, you know, those videos. And then I'll see all the time, like, oh, man, I better give up piano. What's the point? I don't understand this thinking. So just because somebody else plays better than you, you shouldn't play? Why? That has zero to do with your playing. If you're playing because you love to play, play. Get better as you can. Set goals for yourself, and then you have to actually work to achieve them. If you're not practicing every day or every other day, it's going to be very hard to get better. And you don't have to sit and practice for four hours at a time. But you do need to keep this thing active in your life, okay? Your fingers moving, your brain concentrating. It becomes a part of who you are. That's my general advice to all of you. If you are just learning one piece only, you only want to play one piece, okay, that's fine. I, I, I mean, if I don't understand why that would be a thing, but okay. But if you just love to play, do it, okay? Um, which journey book is best to play first? Um, you can get the book. Let's, do I have it over here? Hold on one second. Let me see. Um, no, I thought I had it here, but I don't. Um, like the easy level one, is I think it's called 24 Easy Exercises or something like that. Um, just look, do a Google search for easy churny um, and you'll find it. Um, my, Michelle, thank you. I do not have a regular technique regimen, just a large volume of music to practice as an accompanist. It's a good reminder that I should devote practice time to technique. Yeah, I also spend a lot of time accompanying. Actually, I had a, a job this morning accompanying a choir. But usually the, those kinds of things are very easy to accompany, so I just sight read. But sometimes I'll, in fact, I put up a picture a few months ago of one of the pieces that I was almost had to sight read. I had like three days to learn, which was atonal and super fast. I didn't do it. I, it was not possible for me to learn it in the time given. Um, so sometimes you just have to say, look, I'm going to do the best I can. But yeah, technique is very, very important to keep up. Okay. Uh, Slim Boy Fat. Oh, I remember your name. What is the best approach to learn all the chords, sevenths, and the extensions and the inversions? Um, okay, I'll make a video about that. There are a lot of chords, <laughs> um, with like the altered chords, you know, sharp, sharp five, whatever. Um, I'll make a video about that. Remind me if I forget. The best way to learn it is to go, um, slowly like most things and just start with triads three note chords major minor uh diminished and augmented and say the names of the of the, of the chords as you play it for example if you're going to play like a c major chord you play 
C and you say C, then E, then G, then come back down, G, E, C. You might even sing it, C, E, G, E, G, E, C, you know, and then both hands, then play it at the, you know, at a, as a chord instead of a broken chord. Um, but I'll make a video about that. That's, it's a, it's a pretty big topic. <laughs> So, um, okay, I sometimes, for example, at the end of every month have a feeling that I'm getting worse at playing piano, but I regularly practice. Well, I'm not sure why you have that feeling. You might want to think about, are you getting worse? So, but actually that brings up a very good point. What happens is as we get better, our ceiling gets higher. So we start to want to do more advanced things. And then we attempt the more, the more advanced thing and we go, whoa, I'm not as good as I thought it was. I thought it, I was. But actually, you might be, but now you're trying something harder. And so, you know, now you're feeling inadequate to that level. That happens to everybody. Uh, it, should, it should actually happen to everyone because even people who have been, you know, playing their whole lives, they want to get better too. Everyone wants to get better. I'm going to take a drink. So, all right. You guys have a drink? All righty. Um, so, Arup, thanks a ton for your valuable suggestion and sharing so many information with us. You're very loving and caring. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Do you have tips to, to become better at sight reading? Yes, I have a video. Go watch it. You're very clever and beautiful. Thank you for all the. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My smallest, six years old, seems to have perfect pitch. He can do middle register 100%. Misses sometimes at the very low, oh, okay, or high range. Any way to improve his skill needed possible at all? Uh, singing, singing, singing is very good for improving um, your musical ear. What kind of drink is that? Okay, so it's water, and I've mixed in um, this powder that is vi a vitamin C powder called Emergency, and, and I actually mixed two. I mix two uh, flavors, tangerine and raspberry. It's delicious, and it gives me vitamin C. Um, <laughs> so B5, you're welcome. What I was talking about, um, wow, this went way longer than I thought, but cool questions. My name's Marina. So um, what I was going to say is, what, would I, what was I saying before I started? Oh, okay, I wanted to actually talk to you about two things. So one of them is people asking, how long did it take you to learn that piece? Which they've been asking me since I was, you know, seven years old. Um, it's a really interesting question because you might think it's very simple. Well, when did you start learning it and how long has it been since that time? But it's not as simple as that. So there's, there's actually a story. I don't know if it's true about Picasso sitting at, in a park and a woman comes up to him and says, will you draw my picture? And he says, sure. So it takes him about 30 seconds to draw her picture and he gives it to her and he says, that will be $5,000, please. And she says, what do you mean? It took you 30 seconds. You're gonna charge me $5,000. And he says, no, it took me my entire life to be able to do that deep. So when you asked me, uh, how long did it take you to, to learn that piece? It took my entire life. Everything I've done until I started playing that piece contributed to me playing that piece. Um, so, and then uh, I, I always, always think about why do people wanna know? And I've come up with these reasons. Let me know if there are more reasons than this. So they want to know because uh, they want to have a reason. Like, for example, if I say, oh, it took me five years to learn that piece. They want to have a reason for saying, oh, man, I, you know, that's way too long. I can't do it. So, like, they excuse themselves from their dream of wanting to play. Or if I say, you know what, it only took me, like, a day, then they could say, wow, you know, you're talented. I could never do that. Again, excusing themselves from pursuing their dream. Um, or they're, they, they're trying to compare themselves somehow like, oh, I learned that piece. It took me, you know, a month and it only took you a day. I must not be very good. Well, what's the point of comparing? You know, you haven't 
done the things that I've ha- I've done. In college, there was a time when I was practicing for seven hours a day. I've practiced a lot, you guys. And I gave myself tendonitis. I, I talk about that in one of my videos too. And the doctors told me I, everything everything hurt. Like I couldn't play. I developed tendonitis because I was my technique was good, but it wasn't the, what it should have been. So I went to the doctor because I couldn't even sleep at night. The the pain was so bad. And the I went to a sports medicine doctor, and he said, "What have you done to yourself?" And I told him, "I'm a piano player. I'm in college. I've been playing seven hours a day." And he said, I hate to tell you this, but you need to find yourself another career. Well, clearly I did not uh, follow his advice. I took the medicine he gave me. I stopped playing for about two months and then I built my technique up from zero. I literally took apart every motion that I was making and figured out why I was doing what I was doing and what I could do. So. When I say that I've been working at this, I'm serious. So for you to ask me or any other pianist that you admire, how long did it take you to learn that? There's not a good answer to that. Do what you need to do. If you really want to play, find a way to do it. Don't compare yourself. I guess that's the theme for today. Don't compare yourself. Be you. You know, that's what makes life really cool is that we're all slightly different or very different from one another. And, you know, it's so interesting. Imagine if everybody was exactly like you. (laughs) I wouldn't want that. So um, who else? Uh, Bye, Matt. Um, Okay, so what's the hardest piece that you've ever played? I don't know. It was... You mean, do you mean for solo piano? I don't know. I guess I don't think of, I don't think in those terms. I really don't. I think about, do I want to play this uh, for whatever reason? Am I getting paid enough (laughs) if I don't like the piece? Or do I just really want to play it for myself? Or is it for a specific purpose? And then I learn it. That's it. I don't think that, I don't think in terms of hard or easy. I just think, do I want to do this? And that's actually my approach to life. Do I want to do this? Yes, that's it. How am I going to do it? I don't think is it hard or is it easy. So I'm sorry. I don't have an answer for that one. Um, I have to go sleep. Oh, okay. Uh, so Matt, go to sleep. Yeah, I think I will do another one of these. This is really cool. I'm not sure when. Um, what are your thoughts on playing piano by ear? I think it's awesome. I do it. I do it all the time. Um, if you can only play by ear, you're very limited. I've actually uh, met a lot of pianists who can only play by ear and, you know, they've been, they're, they were older. Um, and I don't mean older, like, you know, they had been playing for a while. Let's put it that way. So they felt like it was like too late to learn how, how to read. And, uh, and every one of them says to me, you're so lucky that you can read music or it's such a good thing that you learn to read music because there are very many things, opportunities, doors that are close to you if you can't read music. There are many opportunities close to you if you can't play by ear either. So both are very, very important. Um, Okay, let's see. What? uh, what Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? (laughs) Can you play Desperado? You mean like by the um, Desperado, that one? I love that song. No, actually, I can't. I haven't learned it. I should learn it. I'll learn it by ear. Is there a way to find out best fingering? I start slow on a piece and take a long time to print it in the muscle memory, the fingering. Then I speed up, and that fingering doesn't work, so I wasted time. So if it's a if it's like if you're talking about a particular passage of music, what you can do is figure out a fingering, and just for that like short passage, try making that faster and faster. If it didn't work figure out why it didn't work. For the most part, like a general rule for finger for fingering, if you're gonna go fast, is to have as few hand position moves as possible. Because if you're like tucking under or jumping around, that's taking time. So try to figure out like, how can I play this particular passage with as few hand position changes as possible? Okay, and then you know, then you just adjust. If, if you played something fast and it didn't work, go back, 
do it slow. That's actually, that's the really good thing about forgetting. <laughs> Imagine if we remembered everything that we played, then we could never fix mistakes. So it's really good that we forget after a while. So if you practice the new fingering in place of the old one, it will take, you know, that will get in your muscle memory. Um, may I ask why you started your channel? The first piece I learned was from your video, what's your motivation to create? the tutorials. Yeah, I just talked about that. I felt like there was a lot of, I don't want to say clickbait, because it's not that there was just a lot of misleading video titles, let's put it that way, where people would teach a very small, <coughs> excuse me, a very small chunk of what they said they were going to teach. And then it'd be like end of the video. Um, the other reason I started was, um, you know, like in real life, I see people all the time who play piano or who come to me to ask for lessons or whatever. And so many times, like, especially with, with kids that have been taking for a while, the parent will say, oh, my, my child has been taking piano for six years. And then I see the child playing and the child plays like as though they had maybe three months of lessons. And I really got angry. You know, I just, I just got angry and I thought this is not okay. Not only are, are people wasting their money, but they're wasting their time, which is like the most valuable thing we have. How many times do you get to be a child and, you know, devote time to learning piano? Only once in your life. So I said, okay, I can't teach everybody in the world, but I can put out what I've learned and whoever's interested will hopefully find me. So, so that, that's one of the reasons. Um, yeah. How long will I keep going with YouTube? I don't know. It's very time consuming, but I, I really like it too. So, you know, that's why I don't post very often because I actually have a career <laughs> as, as a musician. So, um, who's next? How to learn relative pitch. Um, so there are a lot of um, ear training apps available. You can try those. A relative pitch, basically, all it is is being very familiar with the intervals of music. That's really what it is. So it's ear training. I, I, I've been lucky and unlucky both at the same time. I was very lucky because I have perfect pitch. So those things just came very easily to me. And so in college, you know, all those classes that were for ear training, like I aced them with no studying because... I have this, uh, you know, this ability, but at the same time, I'm unlucky because not ever having to have learned how to hear music in this particular way, I don't, not really good at teaching it. <laughs> All right. But I know there are a lot of apps that can help you. So getting comfortable with the, um, hearing the intervals of music and singing them, you have to sing. Um, I feel very limited because I can only play by ear. I feel like I should learn to read music soon. Yeah, go get my piano boot camp or instant piano. Cody, I think you've been playing for a while, right? So if you've been playing for a while, you might want to do instant piano. It gets more like there's less there's so piano boot camp is teaching the same thing. Basically, the one and two are teaching the same thing as instant piano, but they're giving you a lot more background and explanations. And instant piano is for people who don't really want those explanations. They just want to see how to do the thing that I'm teaching and then do it. So I would definitely recommend that. I think on Udemy, they're on sale all the time. But if you follow the links that I post, you can buy those courses for like $10 each. I don't know how long that's going to be true because Udemy is actually, which is the platform where I sell those courses, is doing really weird things with pricing. So if you're thinking about buy, uh, buying those courses, you should do them sooner rather than later because eventually my coupons will not give you a certain set price if I'm understanding correctly. It's really weird. I'm thinking of getting away from Udemy actually because I can't control any of that stuff. All right. Bye, Real Winslet fan. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out. Um, the Russian troll network. <laughs> Do you have a favorite piece? No, I have such a hard time with favorite anything. I like variety. I can't pick a favorite anything, which is one of the reasons I will never get a tattoo <laughs> because I like variety. I, I can't stick with one thing. Um, functional ear training app is really good. Oh, okay. Awesome. Check it out. Thanks. Real ones. Real Winslet fan. Uh, okay. Interesting. Slim boy fat. 
need to scoot. Thanks for all the work. Okay, bye. Thank you. Um, so I don't speak Spanish, Enrique. I don't know if anybody here speaks Spanish. I grew up in LA, so I can like sort of understand when people speak to me, but not really. Is My pedaling course is not on Udemy because, I, as, again, I'm not crazy about what Udemy is doing. My piano uh, pedaling course is on a different site, which I'm having trouble with right now this weekend. Uh, somehow the checkout button is not working. And I know I had said you get a special price this weekend, so I'm actually extending that special price because of this problem. Uh, I, I noticed a number of people signed up for so basically uh, on that site, you sign up as a learner and then you purchase the course. So a number of people have signed up but not purchased the course. So I'm going to extend the special pricing for a week because I need to have it figured out. And today's Sunday. Of course, it happens on a week weekend. So I put in a, you know, a, a ticket with a, the site to see what's going on, but I probably won't have it figured out until tomorrow. So if you want to get the piano pedaling course, um, I'm going to keep that special price of $72, $72 up for the entire week, okay? Um, of course, if you're watching this sometime in the future, you know, sorry. <laughs> um, all righty. Can you play The Flight of the Bumblebee? So um, that, I mean, I can if I practice it. Um, it's actually not originally written for a piano, but there is a piano transcription for it. It's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Um, I wish I had time to sit and just practice pieces that I love. Right now, uh, my life isn't set up in that way. I do, most of my performing is not of pieces that I would love to play. Not that I don't like to play them, but you know, it's whatever is being asked of me. Like right now I'm music directing a musical theater production. So a lot of my time is spent on those pieces, um, not learning them, but teaching them to other people. <laughs> to sing them and so on. But anyway, um, yeah, if I if I had time to practice, I could play it. Uh, I don't play other instruments. Uh, when I was a child, I took a violin very briefly, but my entire childhood was basically spent uh, getting good at piano because my family was very poor. Uh, we immigrated here from the Soviet Union with nothing, literally nothing. And so, um, we had to scrape by and for me to take piano lessons was very expensive. And so I had to earn my piano lessons by earning scholarships or winning competitions. And so all of my efforts was put into getting very good at piano. When I was an adult, I tried to play guitar. It hurt my hands so much I couldn't do it. So for now it's just piano and voice. Um, let's see. Tips on learning new piano songs because I'm trying to learn the full for release. I'm not sure what your question is, but I do have the tutorial for the first part and I do have practice time videos for the rest of it. So you can follow those. Do you have a tutorial for somewhere in time? Not yet. I know uh, people have been requesting it. Learning Moonlight Sonata. I love the way you do it. Thank you so much, Maylee. I, I do have somewhere in time on my request list. It's a beautiful song. Um, and I will do it at some point. What type of music do you like? I like any music that makes me feel something. Literally, like I like classical, I like funk, um, I love disco, I love rap, I love you know hip hop, I love jazz, I love everything as long as it makes me feel something. Um, Oh, hey, Matt. I said, I read, for example, Moonlight Sonata 2 movement. Should I learn to play it by memorizing without sheet, or should I play it while looking at the sheet music? You should do both. You should look at the sheet music so that um, you're reading what's actually there and getting the information accurately. And then at some point, you should memorize it so that you can play it without the sheet music. Saludos desde Peru. Un fuerte abrazo. Oh, gracias. <laughs> Hola. My, my Spanish is very limited. Sonata in C major, please. If you're talking about the Mozart sonata in C major, I have it up. It's been up for a while. If you're talking about a different sonata in C major, you'll have to be more specific. Uh, which a live composer do you like the most? Ooh, do you mean classical? Well, I guess my favorite composer who is alive is um, Stephen Sondheim. 
He writes, he writes uh, musical theater. I love Stephen Sondheim. Love, love, love. Um, okay, Edgar, part four is up. <laughs> it's been up for a year. Go find it. Do a Google search. Do a search on YouTube. Please stop, stop spamming, spamming now. Um, Cody, you learned the whole piece with me. Awesome. Just bought my instant piano. Woohoo! Thank you very much. You got a good price, I hope. Uh, Sondheim is amazing. I love Sondheim. Um, actually, so uh, Sondheim did the lyrics for West Side Story, which is being remade. I can't wait to see it. I love the original. It's a little cheesy, but I like that the new one is being made and it's being made with actors that are appropriate to the roles. Okay. The, the actors that were chosen for the roles in the original West Side Story, not appropriate. Um, so we've made great strides in that respect. Um, can you teach us the all of me? Which one is, so there is an all of me that's a jazz standard, all of me. Why not take all of me? There's that one. And then there's the John Legend, you know, all of me. So you'll have to tell me, you'll have to tell me which one. All right, I'm going to start wrapping it up, but I wanted to give you what I promised, which is the one thing that surprisingly will make you better than almost anything else you can do. John Legend. Ah, okay. All right. Um, I'll, I'll put that on my request list. Um, do, does anybody have any ideas? What is the one thing that you can do to make yourself better faster? Give me your comments. Practice, practice. No, because it has to be something surprising. So think about it, something surprising. Not have ADHD. Actually, I, I have, I've had students that have had ADHD and one of them is now a professional musician. So, and he plays like a million instruments. I think ADHD can be a very valuable tool actually. Uh, video record your playing. That's a good one. That's a very good one. I'm, that's not the one I was thinking of. Practice slow is a good one. Not the one I'm thinking. Finger fights. <laughs> no, not finger fights. Having a lot of trouble. Okay, I don't. I'm sorry that you're having trouble. Parts by parts is good. Not what I'm thinking of. Something that is surprising. I'll give it like one more minute. What do you think? Anyone? No practice. Nope. We've already we already said that's pretty. That's pretty like. That's pretty expected. You should be. I don't know. Okay, practice with closed eyes is a good one. Sing is a good one. Slow down is a good one. Not what I'm thinking. Learn to listen and play. Keep going. Keep going. Give hints. Oh, I'll give hints. <laughs> no, I'm not going to give you hints. Uh, only play music that you like. No. Nope. Uh, cuando vienes a Peru? Oh, I don't know when I'm coming to Peru. Uh, capital. Oh, okay. Yes, I love I love uh, South South American food. Uh, although I don't eat meat, so that will have to be worked out. Hints, please. Okay, I'm 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 not. It involves another person. That's the only hint I'm going to give. So, what do you think? I'll give you. Five more seconds, and then I'm going to tell you. Tutorial, practice hands, sap, piano teacher, playing a duet, swapped. Mm, no. Okay, I'm going to tell you. Ready? Playing the head. Playing the head is a very good one. Uh, it's not what I was thinking, but it's very good. No, actually, I should make a video about that. Finger race. Stop it. <laughs> okay. Playing for others is a good one. All right. You ready? Here it is. The best way to get better at something is to teach somebody else to do it. Did I blow your mind? When you teach somebody else to do it, you really have to know what you're doing. So, all right. So find someone that you know <laughs> and teach them a little something. You don't have to like have them sit down for an hour Teach them a little tiny thing that will take you maybe five minutes. Start there. You'll see that it's going to have you thinking in a completely different way than you do when you're practicing for yourself or when you're learning from someone else. 
I do that with guitar. I should have known. <laughs> Very good. All right. So there you go. Uh, I'll do one of these again soon at some point when I have a Sunday afternoon uh, somewhat free. It won't, it won't be for, it won't be next week. Um, I tried teaching my dad to play Moonlight Sonata and he learned to play first five seconds. It's good. I learned a lot. Even I taught martial arts, but I'm not in the position of teaching piano. You don't have to teach piano. Piano, that's a very big topic. Just teach one little thing. Maybe the introduction of something, one hand. All right. Thank you very much for being here with me. I had so much fun. This went way faster than I thought. I, I thought I'd be here for about half an hour. And I do not live in Indiana. So um, I hope to see you around again. Let me know if you have any questions. If you're trying to purchase the piano pedaling course, I promise you it's worth the money. I know it seems like a lot of money, but if you think about it, it's well, well under $100. And, you know, you spend, you can spend $100 on a night out and that's that. But with this pedaling course, you actually get like my instructions, which I hope you like by now since you're here and you'll learn how to use the pedal. And that will be like one or one more thing that you'll have in your toolbox. Okay. So if you can swing it, I would say go ahead and buy it this week because it's going to be on sale all week because of the problem I'm having on the checkout page. <laughs> All right. All righty. So um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> ah, how do I end this? There we go.